Well, we have actually done the drip photography once before, but unfortunately the camera axe that we used in that case is no longer available. So we went with another item. Yeah, so we decided we were going to set up, show you real quick how to do it, and this time we're going to be using the Pluto setup. Right. Now there's a number of different um, units that you can use. Uh, there's MyOps, a lot of people. MyOps has a dedicated system. For drip photography only. Yeah, just for the drip photography. It actually is approximately the same price as the, the Pluto system, which but the Pluto system has more features. Yeah, it has a laser in it, it has sound, it has vibration, it has a lot of the stuff that the camera acts at in it. Right. In addition to the drip thing, and what I like about this drip as opposed to the MyOps is the nozzle there is uh, brass and the valve is brass, while the ones on the MyOps, my understanding is, because I haven't actually seen it, it's plastic. I mean, I've seen pictures of it, and right. it looks like, now these were plastic, but they replaced them with brass, so it gives you much cleaner grip. So, um, we have our setup here. Um, this is kind of a uh, macro photography, so um, there's two ways you can set this up. Okay. You can hook the Pluto to fire the flash, in which case the infrared turns on the camera but you have to leave it for a second or two, so you have to be in a dark space, dark room. Okay, okay. Or you can use the Pluto, the trigger, to trigger the flash. So you can do it out here in a, a lit area. What you do is you set the camera so the ambient doesn't really intrude. We're kind of in a shaded area here, and I've got my ISO turned way down. I've got the so you've got the Pluto connected not to the flash but to the to camera, the camera itself. itself. And yeah. it's using And then I've got a remote on the camera that will fire the flash unit. So we've got a right. flash. There's one back, back here, here, which you can't really see. And quite. Our, our main flash and our main flash. Now the flash units you have to set those up. You don't want them full power. You want a quicker flash, like a thirty thousand. So you do that by taking your flash unit and putting it down to like one thirty second or one sixty fourth of the full power. Right. That gives a much, much quicker flash and it'll freeze that splash. Otherwise you're going to get motion blur in the flash itself. The final thing I want to mention is, um, grab this here, is a solution. I mean you can use plain water, but in this case we want a little bit thicker. Uh, it gives a little better splash. It kind of sticks together a little better. I'm using guar gum, G-U-A-R gum and you mix this up in some hot water, stir it up, and then you probably have to filter out any impurities. Impure, well, it gets a, a sediment it, as it uh, Well, it gets chunks in it, basically, yeah. yeah. So you don't want them because they'll gum up the uh, drip right. container. Drip, dripper, what do you call it, drip mechanism? So this is something you want to do just before yeah. you get ready because otherwise it I will start congealing. I do this the congealing. night before and leave it overnight because I do it in hot water and then I try to filter it out. I was going to say, but then you, you definitely have to filter because I can already see particles yeah. in there. And this has already been filtered once. The other uh, item you can use, and a lot of people prefer it over the guar gum, is xanthan gum. And you can get these at health food stores, probably grocery stores, definitely out of Amazon because that's where I got mine. I also looked up xanthan gum. It's cheap. It will last you forever. Believe me, it comes in a nice big, and you're only going to use like an eighth of a teaspoon to a pint of water. So, um, and then what I do is I take this and I'll water it down even further. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of like our base solution. Right. We'll water that down before we put it in there. So, so we got everything set. So yeah. The final thing happens. is um, the Pluto is fired with a smartphone. You can use either Android or, in my case, uh, Apple, iOS, and. Um, it has all the settings in there, but the key in this thing, and this is what the experimentation is, you, get, you want to um, get the first drip as it comes down. You want that splash as it splashes back up to be at its peak. Then you want the second drop to hit that when it's at its peak. So it takes some setup. Also, this is one of those things that um, you're going to do it again and again and again because uh, maybe out of every 10 images you might get maybe 20, you may get one right. good one. So well, I, it's I also will, addictive. Okay. <laughs> and I will say that 
there are methods to do it without using something like the Pluto, but it requires even more. Oh, that's just pure luck, yeah. Whether you can get more a, experimentation. Get a little bag, poke a hole in it, and let it constantly drip. But um, the chances of getting a collision are very, very slim. This and then way, also your droplets tend to be, you get motion you, you blur. You can't control this side. Right. You can control the size of the droplets. In addition, you can even set up a third droplet if you're really ambitious. So this will allow you up to uh, three drops. I think the myops actually goes up to five, but ah. I can't imagine. Um, you also can use other liquids. You can make, put some milk, dairy creamer, to uh, give some opaqueness to the uh, water. The tray down below that it's falling into is just plain water. I might use an gorgum in that. Um, and food coloring. You can use colored gels. I've got a background back here. So why don't we go ahead and set this up because it's going to take some time in order to have successful yeah, images, get the, right? Yeah, the timing right. And so um, we don't want you to sit through. This could be a two-hour uh, <laughs> podcast. We don't want to do that. I, I think Jim will get it set up pretty quickly. But this way, you get all the kinks out, and in that way... Yeah, I should mention uh, that the, the unit here allows you to set up that it will put a drip out every five seconds two seconds you can set how much and it'll fire the camera automatically until you get the um, column that you want and then set up for the second drip so you get that nice collision so let's go ahead and okay. set this up let's do it Okay, well, drip photography is very addictive, and uh, we're just going to go over a few things real quick. I use guar gum to thicken the water just a little bit. You don't want to get too thick because it'll gum up the it'll drip. gum up the drip drip apparatus. Yeah, apparatus. Yes. But uh, guar gum, and what I do is I use some hot water out of the regular out of the kitchen tap. faucet. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to boil it, and uh, the same technique would apply to xanthan gum then you take and sprinkle about an eighth of a teaspoon to a pint of water and sprinkle it over the top because you don't want it to just clump up and then stir it rapidly then I let it sit overnight and then you have to strain out any lumps that are going to form anyway and then you use that as a base solution in order to cut down the let water. Let me give a hint we were first using a uh, paper towel but it was very tedious and also yeah. we were worried about getting tears so i said hey do we have any coffee filters and we used that we had some of the cone shaped ones and we actually used uh a piece off of a yeah, an older coffee most maker. of the metal strainers are probably too big no you want to but use cheesecloth like is very cheesecloth would go, work good the coffee filters coffee which filter just worked about everybody has very very good works. very well i mean mm -hmm. and it was nice it was much faster it caught the clumps and we actually did a uh, two times filtration to get rid of the clumps. Yeah, and I notice after it sits down that more clumps tend to form, so you probably have to do this every time before you do it. Another thing <laughs> is food coloring. I like that. We have oh. to do this every time before you do it. Before you before <laughs> you put it into the, the dripper. I think they get it. Go but I know. We're just, let's face it. We were just came off the road yesterday. It was, <laughs> a, it was a fun day trip, but it was a long drive, so we're probably still a little, a little punchy. happy. But you know what? That's the fun of photography is getting well, to go and do things. Xanthan yes. war gum solution, just use that in the drip, dripper, mm -hmm. not in the...
container that no, that's just regular into. water. Yeah. And you, of course, you fill that all the way to the top to the point of I overflow. Like, yeah, I, you because, can use glasses. I mean, use your imagination. This is yeah. one of those things that experiment, experiment with different. Uh, I put a little bit of coffee cream in it. You can put a little milk or something to give it a little, right? Uh, not so much thicken it, but give it a little more opaqueness, so it picks right. up. A uh, big experiment with the directions of the flash. One of the things I did I thought was kind of unique is, uh, especially if you don't have several flash units, is I used a conve uh, concave a vanity mirror to help fill in from the uh, main flash. Uh, I also find that many times is lighting the background is better than directly lighting the, just like in uh, oil and water photography. So, yeah, there's... Good things to try. We would love you to share the uh, your results right. with and, us. And, and there are more know. than one way to trigger the shutter yeah. and the flash. Yeah, now we were using the Pluto. We said that MyOps is also another good solution. The price is about the same. The, the Pluto just is a lot more flexible. And we may do some more stuff with the Pluto going forward. But we've actually seen some people not just using the drip apparatus to trigger, but using the laser to trigger. Sometimes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. you know. This is the cool thing about it. Use an imaginative approach. When you get good success and you can repeat it, you have now got a technique. And if you really want to get into this, there are some units that start around $600, and I've seen them go up to like eight or $900 that have multiple drip mechanisms. And I've seen some amazing stuff where they put different colors of dyes in each one, and um, they're controlled by a computer, but now you have multiple collisions and each collision is a different colors i mean just it's amazing they call it uh water sculpting and it's kind of amazing yeah. if you really get into it want to spend that kind of money something and to keep if you have mind. that kind of money to spend on drip photography we would like to talk to you about you sponsoring the podcast our patreon yes <laughs> <laughs> So that's all I got for now. We would, again, like you to share your results with us. And please subscribe to us on YouTube. We need the subscribers. 